remember studying groups, we had the idea of a normal subgroup, which gave us some properties with which we could do things. It's not exactly the same, but sort of the analog for rings is an ideal. So a subring of a ring R is called an ideal if for every element of the ring and every element of the ideal, both RA and AR are in the ideal. This is sometimes called an absorption property. So we can say that an ideal absorbs elements of the ring. To see how that works, it's probably easiest to look at an example. Let's say my ring is the integers, standard addition and multiplication, and my ideal is 4z, which is the set of all 4n such that n is in z. Basically, we've got the nth multiples of 4. Okay, so let's say that m is an element of z and 4n is an element of 4z. Certainly, if we do m times 4n, we get 4 times mn, which is an element of 4z. So the basic idea is that this absorbs elements of the integers. When you take an integer, times a multiple of 4, you're going to get a multiple of 4. Now, according to the definition, we have to check both RA and AR, but in this case, we've got a commutative ring, so those are going to be the same thing. Now, again, we've seen this kind of test before. It helps to have an easy way of checking whether a subset is an ideal or not. So, a non-empty subset A of a ring R is an ideal of R if A minus B is an A whenever A and B are in A. That's very much just like our sub-ring test. But then, we have to kind of check this absorption property. R A and A R are an A whenever A is an A and R is an R. Let's actually look at a very generic example here. Let's say that R is a commutative ring. And then let's say that C is some element of R. I'm going to define this to equal the set of all CR such that R is in my ring. Now this is the same notation that we used for the cyclic subgroup, and it's a slightly different thing here. It's related, but not exactly the same thing. We're just going to, even though we're using the same notation, we'll know which it is by context. Since we're talking about rings here, this is the ideal generated by C. Okay, so how does this work? We'll check our first property. So let's say that A and B are in A. So that means that a is equal to C times R1, B is equal to C times some different element of the ring. So A minus B would equal C R1 minus C R2 using the distributive property because these are all ring elements. And there we go. Because we have a ring, R1 minus R2 has to be in the ring. Therefore, this has to be in A, since A is anything of C times a ring element. Now, similarly, we need to show this absorption property. Again, we've got a commutative ring, so we only really need to show one way. But well, that's pretty obviously here. So if I have A is in my 
ideal generated by C, and R is in R. Since A is in that thing, A has to equal C, uh, let's call it R prime. And so A times R is C R prime times R. And again, since we've got a ring, R prime times R has to be in the ring. Therefore, this is an element of A. And again, we've got a commutative ring, so RA and AR are the same thing, so we don't need to worry about checking both directions. This general example we did right here, I want to make a little bit more specific. So, I want to say I've got a ring, which is what we're going to call Rx. We'll be looking at this ring a lot as we go forward. But for right now, the basic idea is this is the set of polynomials with real valued coefficients. I'm not going to go through all the details to prove that this thing actually is a commutative ring, but it is. And now what I want to do is using that same kind of ideal generated by notation we looked at in the last example, let's consider the ideal generated by the polynomial x. If we do that, then really what we're getting is the set of all p of x times x such that p of x is in that thing. Well, if we think about it that way, so we're just taking all polynomials times x, what we really get is the set of all p of x in r of x, such that p of 0 equals 0. Uh, equals, yeah, because basically what we're saying is that our constant is zero. Because of what we just showed back here, we don't need to know anything, I mean, need to show anything further. This is an ideal. So, what is the point of having an ideal? The point of having an ideal is basically just the point it was of having a normal subgroup. If we have an ideal, we can create a factor ring. If we've got a ring and a subring, we'll create our cosets basically the same way that we did when we were doing our factor group. But of course, because it's a ring, we've got two operations. We got an addition operation and a multiplication operation. But in both cases, we're going to define it basically the same way. If I have a coset, and the coset's always defined by addition, whether I've got multiplication or addition that I'm doing for my operation, I take the element that's being added, add those things. And the whole point is that this is well defined, it's a ring under those operations exactly when the subring is an ideal. I'm not going to prove this theorem, but I will give an example. Let's go back to our original example for an ideal, which was that we had the set of multiples of four. So I want to look at z mod 4z. What are the elements of this?
we're taking elements of z added to 4z. So really we're going to get 4z and that'll be the same thing as 4 plus 4z. It'll be the same thing as negative 8 plus 4z, etc. So we'll just really call it 4z. Then we're going to get 1 plus 4z. So that will be the elements in this whole thing would be negative 3, 1, 5, 9, and so on in both directions. And again, neg 1 plus 4z is the same thing as 5 plus 4z is 9 plus 4z, and so on. We're going to get 2 plus 4z. That's going to be negative 2, 2, 6, 10. Again, infinite set in both directions. We're going to get a 3 plus 4z, same kind of thing. And when we get to 4 plus 4z, we're back to that set. So, the thing is, we're getting an addition operation and a multiplication operation with these sets. For my addition operation, I've got 4z, 1 plus 4z, 2 plus 4z, 3 plus 4z, I'm not going to go through every element here because this video is getting kind of long. Let's, for example, if I do 2 plus 4z added to 3 plus 4z, the operation says we're getting 5 plus 4z. But 5 plus 4z is the same thing as 1 plus 4z. So 2 plus 4z added to 3 plus 4z is 1 plus 4z. If you go through and continue to fill out this table, here we get 4z, 1 plus 4z, 2 plus 4z, 3 plus 4z. And it's easy to see then that this is acting like an identity element. In fact, if you go through and do this, you very quickly see that we're effectively just getting mod 4 arithmetic. I suggest that you go ahead and try to fill out the rest of this table, and also go ahead and try to create the table for the multiplication operation, which will again really be isomorphic to mod 4 multiplication.